I'm now going to tell you another very simple trout and grayling pattern. Uh, this time it's on a jig hook, as you can see. It's the uh, partridge jig hook. Uh, in this instance, it's a size 12, and that's accompanied by a 3.5mm tungsten bead. Now, on the jig hooks, it's quite important to utilize uh, the slotted tungsten beads rather than the uh, the, the, the normal uh, normal tungsten beads, quite simply because they fit better down and over the head and actually give you a, basically a better uh, jig effect and make sure that the pattern does actually ride upside down, uh, which really lends itself. If you're fishing very deep for trout and grayling, these patterns are, are fishing upside down to so the hook points pointing upwards, uh, so you tend to have less snags. Um, and also you can hook a lot more of the fish in the top of the mouth, which I think gives you a, a better hook hold as well. So again, this is going to be a very simple pattern. Um, colour the thread doesn't matter, we're going to be using the Vivas thread again in a 10-0. We're going to start off right by the, the bead. What we're going to do is, so just secure the thread, but then I want that bead to stay in kind of that position. To do that or to achieve that, what I do is I push my fingers in behind the bead and actually do a bed of thread just in behind it there. And as you can see, when it creates that bed, it secures that in place and that's perfect there. Again, you can only really achieve that with the slotted beads. Very simple pattern. I'm going to put some cocktail on fibres in the tail. Don't need too many of these actually, too many fibres for the tail, which is a good thing considering the, the price of Coq de Leon. Uh, if you wanted to, you could also use Partridge or um, you could also use something like uh, Bronze Mallard or even some uh, just some Coq Ackle fibres. So just secure that in, take it down towards the bend of the hook, just up there is perfect. Just going to snip the excess there. So for the tail, we're actually going to utilise something called Tran Transbright. Uh, again, it's by Funky Fly Tang. It comes in a, a myriad of colours. This is actually an olive, which lends itself obviously for uh, the river fishing. I think it's primarily designed for. Uh, fishing blobs and uh, and so forth, but uh, there is a, a cross purpose into the river fishing world as well. Uh, so you just need one strand of this. So I'm not going to stretch this, I'm actually going to leave it as one strand. It's around 1 to 1.5 millimeters in diameter. So it's great for just single strand use colour of the thread used underneath does actually show through a bit so bear that in mind I don't mind it in this instance especially with this bright orange so what I do rather than actually ribbing it when I get through to that stage I actually put a bit of super glue so it's going to create the, uh, the strength from underneath and again that just makes the pattern very straightforward as well so it's going to wrap that around just a very easy generic olive pattern to use in the rivers basically. Um, the more times you take it over itself basically the darker the olive gets. So I'm going to stop it around there just to give it a little almost a, a tag at the end or a butt and then just take it back up and just create slightly darker towards the thorax like so. So it's kind of a, a gradual darkening of the material, just to there. And then I'm just going to skewer that off, just a couple of turns in front, take it back, fold it over, and then just a couple of turns the other side. That's perfect. So that's your body and tail done. Again, these patterns literally take about three minutes to tie. Um, what I'm going to use in the thorax for this one, I really like... Um, pine squirrel. So I'm going to use some, uh, I've already taken some off. 
it's really uh, spiky dubbing but actually quite a nice dubbing to work with as well so you get a mixture of the underfur and then the uh, the longer card hairs as well so it's going to take a bit of that up to the silk and just dub it onto the silk you can mix a bit of if you want to mix a bit of spectra in at this stage you can but actually that um, the body is fairly um, flashy anyway so I don't think this pattern really needs much more than that and that's it so what I do then I'm just going to brush all of that back do a couple of turns behind there and again I don't bother with whip finishing or anything on these patterns I just put some super glue directly onto the thread and you find some little droplets of the super glue remain on the thread brush all of your fibers back and just take your thread around after you've done that, just pull down, just to pull that thread right down into the pattern where the super glue will impregnate into the fibres and into the thread and that's the pattern done. So all that's left to do then is to pick out this uh, pine squirrel and that's literally with a bit of velcro, just pick it out this is quite a big version of the jig um, Actually, on some of the bigger patterns, you can get away with using fox squirrel instead of pine squirrel. Um, but I think that looks that looks fine. And that's the pattern done. Now you can adjust the colour of the body. Uh, that trans bright stuff does come in a dark olive, uh, and a few other, other colours you can mess around with as well. Um, but as a just a generic olive river pattern, it doesn't get much better than that. Again, very simple to tie. If you were doing a step-by-step -step video, uh, it'd probably literally take you about three minutes to tie. So again, you can probably knock a, about 20 up in an hour uh, and be fishing with a, a good selection in no time.